Hi all, this is Joe from Adult Education Center on Main Street. You know we have a new address and it is 1747 Main Street and um, those of you who take physics or chemistry or pre-cal as part of our school you know that you guys go to West Kildonan Collegiate in the evenings and uh, because nobody's going to be going to school over the next few weeks I thought, along with some of my other friends who are teachers, that we would put some, uh, hey, I touched myself, uh, that we're going to put some uh, lessons online, each to our own ability, okay? So what I have done is I've directed uh, my students to this book. It's AP Physics Essentials 1. It's by Dan Fullerton. And uh, I'd say at this point, about half of you have this book. And we just got another shipment of these books in Friday, in fact, Friday morning. So everybody will have this book to refer to. Okay, and um, the author of this book, Dan Fullerton, is, uh, has put uh, videos online and awesome videos and they're going to be we're going to refer to them in addition to what I, what I make up myself and uh, what I can gather from other people okay so you can rest assured that you will have a textbook I also photocopied a couple chapters um, knowing that the textbook was coming so as not to infringe on any copyright rules or anything like that okay so um, let's work on the details of that, by, of how you're going to get it by staying in touch with me over the email. And yeah, so let's start doing some physics. So right now we're in the topic of impulse and momentum. And let me just show you a little experiment that I did the first night that we did this chapter. And it was, you might recall that I had... Um, I had a whole set of these one inch balls and some were, one was glass, one was steel, one was cork, all that kind of thing. This time I'm going to use this foam ball to represent a very light object. Okay, I'm going to represent this ball here as a much heavier object or an object that has more mass. And here's the situation. <coughs> Excuse me. This ball here is minding its own business, not doing anything. Uh, we could talk about this ball all day, not doing anything, actually, the more I think about it. But the perspective we're coming from here is the perspe perspective of momentum. This ball has no momentum. You know why? Because it's not moving. To have momentum, you have to be moving. This ball is going really fast. It's got momentum. Now, what happens when the green ball, which is very light, crashes into the gray ball that's very heavy? Well, the gray ball, you probably know this already, the gray ball will start to go slowly this way, and the green ball will bounce back. It might even appear to bounce back at the same speed. All right, so this is what we're talking about. At, in the initial situation, we have this green ball moving really fast, and the gray ball not doing anything. But there's momentum in the initial case. Then there's when they actually collide. Once they collide, they will break apart and go in their own, uh, in their own directions. So this is the uh, physics behind it. At the, in the original instance, there is a total momentum. All of it comes from this green ball. In the final instance, guess what? There's a total momentum and the total momentum at the beginning that all came from the, the green ball is now shared and guess what if they're going to be 
going their off their own their own way. We're going to figure out how fast um, each one is going. Of course, we need to have some some variables and all that sort of thing. So let me just uh, take a second and um, explain this to you. I'll flip the page. So, can you see me? Uh, yeah, I gotta make sure I write, I look, whoops, I'm gonna go this way. I think my better side is my, no, I don't, sorry, I don't have a better side. I can't help it. So here's the scoop. We've got momentum and impulse as a title. And I'm gonna just give you some values here. M1, that's the green one, is, let me get this up here. M1 is five grams. There's M1 right there. It's moving this way. M2, just sitting there, not moving. Okay, M2 is 35 grams. I am not going to burden myself with a discussion on sig figs, okay? So let's not worry about that for now. Of course, sig figs come into, into play on a test and so on, but I just want to get this concept across. So here we have something that says VI, actually, it's V1I, is 7.5 meters per second. V2I is zero. It's just the, the gray ball is just sitting there. And I'm going to add one thing. I'm going to say that um, this is going east. And why do I say that? Because we know that velocity is a vector. So I'm going to, after giving you all these three things, I've got mass one, mass two, uh, velocity initial, velocity initial. Now you can imagine that there's going to be velocity finals. Okay, so let's take a look. Here we have our initial situation. We have M1 right there, M2 right there. And here comes the question. If the M1, the green one, sorry, if M1 strikes M2 at 7.5 meters per second east, what will be the velocity of each ball the instant they collide? Okay, so I'm going to um, just encourage you right now, before I shut this video down, uh, to take a look at, make sure you have your formula sheet. And there it is right there. If you need to copy those formulas down, do so. And uh, I am going to take this part off because this part here is not as valid as I thought it would be. I'm going to go like that. There we are. So, you know, sometimes we make boo-boos, right? There's your formula sheet. Please make sure that's written down, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.